Welcome to today's Circle Executive Roundtable, Tech Solutions for Community Support Team Safety, Compliance, and Oversight, the WellLife Network Case Study, featuring Sherry Tucker, Chief Executive Officer of WellLife Networks Incorporated. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping reminders. Your audio will be muted during today's briefing. However, we encourage you to submit any questions you may have using the question box located on the right side of your screen. And if time permits, we will answer those questions after the presentation. And finally, the slides and recording from today's roundtable will be archived and available for Open Minds Circle members on the Open Minds website. With that, I will turn it over to Sherry. Thank you, Stacey. Very happy to be here and um, excited to share this presentation. Thank you to Open Minds for allowing um, myself and, and our company, Well Life Network, to be a part of this um, case study and, and sharing what we have found in the tech solutions for community support, team safety, compliance, and oversight. So what we will be looking at today um, in our session overview is really the journey that we have taken here at Well Life to find a technology solution for our community support teams. We have a number of programs and, and initiatives that um, utilize community support teams. They're really the glue that holds together much of what we do and provides the individuals that we serve with um, the supports and um, tools that they need to be able to achieve all their goals and, um, and objectives. So we really hold them in high regard and want to give them um, the technology that they need to be the most successful that they can be. One thing that we have always battled here at Well Life is that um, trying to move our workforce into a paperless environment. Uh, coming from a paper environment, it's hard to change people's habits and the way that they use uh, those tools to accomplish their work. So we have been working diligently over probably the last 10 years to try to find a way to get people into a mobile solution um, where the paper is not going out into the field with them when they're doing their work um, for the individuals when they go visit them at their locations. So the key topics we're gonna be looking at, uh, strategic selection of technology partners that plays an important role in finding the best solution and being able to have success when you utilize technology. Um, the mobile solution for team safety oversight and compliance, we will review what that looks like and kind of the elements that really propelled this into a successful solution for us, as well as how this helped us address some workforce challenges that we've experienced since the pandemic. I know that this has been a very difficult circumstance for all of us in the health and human services industry to face dealing with uh, workforce shortage and, and all retention issues and that type of thing. So a little bit about myself. Um, as, we, as was stated earlier, I am the Chief Executive Officer of Well Life Network. Um, I've been the CEO since 2018. I started with the company about 13 years ago. And um, it's been a journey through that uh, process. I was uh, an accountant by trade, uh, held my CPA license for a number of years and um, worked in the for-profit arena for a number of those years in Florida. So I'm, I'm native of Indiana, but moved to Florida early in my career and spent a lot of time down there. I was in a healthcare field, worked for a large um, practice that um, was uh, an ophthalmologist practice, sorry, couldn't get that word out. And, um, and so through those years, I realized then technology was something that we really needed. Um, over that time, I did turn into um, a mom for a little while and took some time away, but then I got back into um, the for-profit arena and did some CEO, CFO positions um, in Tampa, Florida. Then I had a difficult circumstance where um, one of my children became ill and um, passed away in that process. But through that, I wrote a book and that was something that I never would have expected in my career. So that's why I have author down there 
on the background as well as um, then that led me to the nonprofit sector, uh, realizing that you know there was real purpose in working in the nonprofit arena. I used all those skills that I had gained in the for-profit space to really uh, bring a lot of those techniques into the nonprofit arena and was given the opportunity to start consulting with Wildlife Network, at the time was under a different name called PSCH. So Unexpected New Yorker was when I finally was lured into becoming the CFO of Wildlife after a number of years of commuting from Florida. I was told if um, I would be willing to move to New York, I could become the CEO, and that's how I landed where I am today. So now I can say I've happily lived here for seven years. It's quite a change, but um, but really have enjoyed becoming this unexpected New Yorker and glad to be here today. So as far as Wildlife Network goes, um, this is uh, an agency that was started back in 1980 as a result of um, the, the move by the state to, to privatize, if you want to say, the um, support services for individuals with disabilities and mental health challenges, substance use disorder. They were really, after the Willowbrook Brook case broke in New York, they were really looking to um, move all those types of services for housing as well as the support services into the community-based organization space, and that's how Well Life started. Our mission, we have um, updated and modernized our mission, and our mission today is to foster an environment where individuals, families, and team members have the tools and support they need to thrive and live a well life. We really live by this mission. We are a mission-driven agency and work very hard to make sure every staff person that works with us understands that mission and holds it um, close to everything they do because that's really what we come back to to make sure we're providing the best services possible to the individuals we serve. Speaking of the services, we have a number of services that we offer. We um, have a footprint all over New York City as well as Long Island and we serve over 25,000 individuals. The, the types of individuals and vulnerable populations that we work with are in the um, intellectual and developmental dis disabled individuals, those with mental health challenges, substance use disorders, and we have programs for children and adults. The children, we focus on um, the work in our mental health arena, and the adults are both mental health, IDD, and substance use disorder. Our housing um, comp com comprises 60% of our revenue. Uh, so that is a staple that we feel that the individuals we serve, you must have a safe nurturing location to put your head down at night to enable you to achieve your highest and best potential and be in line with our mission. So we work very hard on making sure that we're providing housing to as many people as possible. And we do that through some of the growth that we experienced over the last few years and that we look to grow in in the future. And that's trying to put more mixed use affordable housing in New York and Long Island. That is not an easy thing. There's a lot of challenge in trying to have that occur um, in this space, but we work very hard to do it. And we're very happy that we're able to continue to grow those available options to help people to become um, properly housed so that they can achieve their goals. As part of that, our community support teams are, are the glue that holds that all together. They're the, the piece that of the puzzle that really helps these individuals achieve um, all the things that they need to achieve, stay stable in their housing, and be able to um, live a, a very fulfilling life. We also have programs in the clinical space where we have um, both uh, substance use disorder and mental health clinics out in our Long Island location. And we provide a lot of supports through that, as well as a number of programs in the state of New York that are called PROS programs. And that's a, a daily program that we provide for individuals in mental health arena. We do have employment services as well. We provide vocational um, services in our programs, as well as we have a subsidiary 
that um, provides opportunity for the individuals with disabilities to work in the community through a number of initiatives um, that have to do with janitorial services and um, landscaping services. So that's a little bit about Well Life. Um, some of the strategic initiatives we have at Well Life um, focus on these areas, uh, digital transformation, enhancing operational resilience, emphasizing agency excellence and growth, prioritizing the well-being of clients and team members, and investing in our workforce. These areas really um, give us direction uh, over the three-year period that we design our strategic plan for. We just initiated a new plan and we're implementing it now. And that's really was one of the catalysts that helped us uh, find this technology solution for our community support teams. It really checks all the boxes in a number of these areas. And um, we're excited to um, move this initiative forward for that reason. So community support teams, as I've mentioned before, they are the glue that holds together all of um, the work that we do. Very important element of our continuum of services. As it says here, they're an essential component of the behavioral health system. And I'm sure many of you who are listening realize that because you probably have those types of teams as well. But I thought it's important for us to pause and really reflect on what these teams are doing and the specific areas that we focused on for this particular technology in this case study. So we have um, assertive community treatment teams or ACT teams as they're called in New York. And these teams, um, the, the way they're designed here, and I think it's pretty consistent across the country, they're intensive, um, provide intensive personalized care, it utilizes um, a multidisciplinary approach with a number of prescribed positions that have to be available, such as a psychiatrist, registered nurse, NP, um, housing specialist, MICA specialist, substance use disorder um, issues and, and um, social work. So all kinds of different disciplines are involved in the care. These teams provide continuous and flexible support. They're available 24 seven. These individuals are the highest acuity in the mental health spectrum that needs these supports. Um, it's also working hard to integrate services for these individuals in a manner that helps them to, to be successful, to stay stable and, um, and achieve the outcomes that they're looking for. So we also work on um, one of the, the big initiatives is to help these individuals become more integrated into the community because in many cases, they're not in a space where they feel comfortable in the community and they really would like to have opportunity to gain those uh, that, that ability to um, be involved with community activities on a more regular basis. The other teams that we um, have included in this initiative are the teams that we use in our housing programs. We have a couple different housing programs that have been utilized for this um, technology, and that's what we call apartment treatment program in the state of New York and our supported housing programs. The apartment treatment program is um, a higher level of care for the individuals that we serve and um, it provides it, and along with, with the supported housing, they um, provide stability through the housing. The main goal is to keep these individuals housed and not homeless. Um, there is holistic support services through the, um, the interactions that our case management teams have for both of these programs. We work on empowering um, our, the clients and individuals that we're serving to help them realize that they can achieve their goals uh, by working on uh, different objectives and initiatives that they have designed with their case manager to determine um, how they can continue to become more and more independent. And we also work hard to coordinate their care to make sure that they are being properly um, keeping up with all their uh, physical, the medical um, side of their arena, as well as their mental health support. So to really understand the positive impact of these community support teams, 
uh, I went ahead and did, um, as we all have started doing more often, a chat GPT search of what uh, what is the impact of these teams. So all of these statistics came from some research that I did in that arena, and there's a number of sightings for these numbers. But for the community or for the ACT teams, um, the the numbers that um, were presented, uh, we've recognized at Well Life as well, but they're amazing and really show the impact that these teams have for these um, different individuals that we're serving. So they indicate that there is a reduction in hospitalizations, 20 to 50%, which is very significant. Decreased ER visits up to 34%, which is also significant and a, a large initiative um, for the Medicaid uh, dollars to be saved. Obviously, some improved housing stability by having these services, these community support services, is helping these individuals to stay housed and not slip back into homelessness if they've had that in their history or have um, uh, jeopardy of, of entering that arena. Um, we also see an enhanced quality of life. Their social functioning, um, opportunity for employment, and life satisfaction have all increased according to the research on the outcomes for these teams, and that's what we've experienced at Well Life as well. And I thought this one was very interesting, the cost effectiveness um, related to these programs, that a, a savings of annually of $12,000 in mental health services is recognized for the work that these teams do. We see similar um, outcomes and um, positive impact from our housing case management, um, and that is reduction in homelessness up to 88%, which is really amazing. Decreased ER and hospitalizations of 50%, again, a major cost saver. Increased stability and independence, 85% um, are remaining housed after one year, which is the primary goal of, of trying to make sure that we have people in the safe nurturing space so they can live a fulfilling life. Um, obviously, enhanced mental health, that people are um, able to control any um, challenges they may be having, um, limit the decompensation issues that may occur, or try to curb those if they do start to occur. Um, and then the economic benefit in this space was very interesting. For every dollar invested, um, there has been a resulting average savings of $2.48 in public cost, which is comprised of the healthcare, criminal justice, and emergency services. So obviously, with all of these positive impacts, it's so important for us um, as providers to make sure these teams are well-equipped, have the tools they need to be successful in the work they're doing so that we can continue to recognize these kind of outcomes and perhaps see them even um, improve more. So at Well Life, the challenges that we were experiencing in um, our community support teams prior to implementing a technology solution or coordination of tracking visits. There's multiple team members on these teams. We wanted to be able to better coordinate um, where everybody was, what they were doing, um, and um, how often people were being seen. It's very hard to do in a manual system when you don't have the information in, um, in data points where you can um, analyze it, review it, and look at it. So we were really looking for something to provide that. We also were looking for some safety in the field. We'd had some unfortunate instances that I'll explain a little later, where we had some um, very dangerous situations that resulted in um, some poor outcomes for our staff. And there was an outcry from the teams to me as the CEO of, what are you going to do to protect us? So I was very, very interested in finding a solution that would provide safety in the field for our staff. Um, we needed up-to-date information in the field. When you're working from paper, from manual systems, it becomes very, very difficult for our teams to be prepared in the best manner possible when they're when they're walking up to a door to knock on the door and try to talk to somebody and they may not have the most up-to-date information. So we were looking for something that could provide that. We had tried to find mobile solutions 
by utilizing our EHR and every time we did that, we, we failed. The connectivity issues, these systems, the EHR systems are powerful solutions for what they're designed to do, which is provide you know, information, um, documentation of, of what's happening in people's files, as well as um, provide billing options that are um, electronic and um, easy to use. But that does not provide the mobile solution that we need for these teams in the field, something that's nimble, easy to use, and very, um, very up to date and, um, and able to connect readily. So that was uh, something that we were trying to solve that problem. Getting rid of the paper forms, as I said before, we having paper in the field equals disaster. You have all kinds of compliance issues that can go wrong there. If you have um, a staff make a mistake, take the wrong paper that has PHI, HIPAA information, and then it gets lost, that is never a good, um, a good place to be. Efficiency to travel locations. We're in a very broad geographic area, especially our Long Island teams. And so sometimes you need to know, do I turn left or right to get the best outcome in terms of how I'm going to spend my day and what direction I'm going to travel? To be the most efficient and effective on my um, on my daily on my visits for the day, um, so we're looking for a solution in that arena. Um, oversight for the teams back in the office for executive management such as myself, as well as for team leads um, to know where the team is, what they're doing, you know, to have that kind of information as well as visit information. So lots of um, data needed in order to manage these teams effectively. Um, managing these workforce challenges, shortage challenges. Uh, when you have people changing, uh, coming in and out, vacant, vacant positions, there's need for others to pick up caseloads and for them to not have information uh, to understand the new people they may be seeing uh, that week because they're covering some cases is very difficult. So we wanted to solve that problem as well, as well as gaining some retention for the staff to know that they have a tool that would engage them more with well life um, as a good employer and providing them with the tools they need. And the last thing was maintaining the golden thread and documentation. And what I mean by that is making sure that we're properly documenting everything that happened on a visit. Because there are a number of visits by these teams in a day, um, it's hard for them to make sure they've got it all um, recorded properly in order for them to enter it into the electronic health record um, when they return to their office. And so this, um, as we were looking for a solution that would provide opportunity for reminders and note taking um, in a capacity that would allow them to do the, to get the proper documentation put into the records when they were ready to, um, to move into that space. Okay, so this slide is going to date me. Um, if anybody recognizes the picture, they'll understand the title of the slide. This is a picture from a movie um, in the 80s that was popular called Desperately Seeking Susan. We weren't seeking Susan, but we were seeking technology. So as I was putting this together, that, that movie popped into my mind, so I, I couldn't resist and I had to put it on here. Hopefully it gives everybody a little comic relief if, if it's a reference that you understand. But it was definitely, it was time for Well Life to move into the digital age, find a solution that provided our teams with um, safety team oversight and compliance options in the palm of their hands. So we were very, um, very pleased that um, we, could, we could find that through a relationship with this organization called Bellow Health. Um, technology partners are a critical component to our continuum of care. You may not think of it that way, but they really do become part of your team. They provide opportunity for us to really achieve our missions, to be able to um, further advance the care and um, of the individuals to improve their outcomes, as well as, as I was saying before, engage our staff and help them to feel valued. Here at Well Life, we do have a mantra that we use called valued, seen, and heard. And I've made it clear to our executive team as well as all, all of our team that I want 
all of them to feel valued, seen, and heard in everything that we do. And so providing a solution that's really going to help them be more successful in their job does just that. It gives them that sense that, hey, this company really cares about me to give me um, the tools that I need to perform my job in the most effective manner. On this slide, I say sometimes they find you. This was a very um, uh, nice circumstance for us in the fact that Bellow Health, when they were starting to develop the software, were seeking a partner and um, they, they approached our ACT team, um, team leads, and was um, trying to get them to um, engage with them. And they very successfully did when they started telling them all the items that they could provide through their platform. And so that was brought to me. I was very interested to hear our team be excited about it because it's one of your biggest hurdles is to make sure you have buy-in from your team when you're when you're implementing new technology. And so anyway, that's how we started with Velo. But in order to make sure they were the right partner, um, we would we ran through some key factors. And I do this with every technology partner that we consider at Well Life, and and that that array of partners is growing as we get into this digital transformation. Here's 10 different um, areas to consider in the selection process, and I wanna go through those in the upcoming slides to really talk about how, why these are areas that you wanna pay attention to when you are considering a partnership with a new technology solution. So the first couple, um, alignment with organizational goals and values. I just recently had our executive team go through an exercise um, by reading a book called Start With Why. It's by Simon Sinek. It's a great book to remind us all that we all have to know our why. Why are we doing what we're doing? What is it that makes us engaged and, and have purpose in the work that we do? Um, this is a good question to ask those partners. When you start your conversation with them, ask them what, what is your why to see if that aligns with your mission and your desired outcomes for the individuals you're serving. You wanna make sure they have that strong commitment to the community support that, that we all do as these provide as provider of these services. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have that straight and that you're um, paying attention to an alignment in the organizational goals and values. As far as expertise and experience, that's kind of a given but you wanna check out industry experience. You know, what, what other settings has this software worked well in? How does it translate to the people that you're serving and the track record? What are some case studies, testimonials, references? Those are all key elements and pretty logical for all of us. I think we all do that in most times when we're looking for new partners. Some other factors, um, Cutting edge solutions in technology, you wanna be with somebody that's keeping up with the trends. As we all know, it's, it feels like it's exponential changes now that, that we're in this space where <laughs> day to day to day, there's new technologies coming out. And we wanna make sure that partner has that under control, that they know how these cutting edge um, technologies can change their product and how they will incorporate that into the work that they're doing. The integration capabilities, you want to make sure that the technology is going to fit into the piece, the puzzle piece will fit into your puzzle that you already have established with all the other platforms that you may be using. That always is a key component and you want to make sure you understand the dynamics of what that's going to require as you go forward. Customization and scalability, these are areas that again are, are logical, but you also want to understand, is this available? Uh, you don't want a square peg trying to get pounded into a round hole. Uh, you want to make sure that these solutions can be uh, manipulated to a level that will allow you to really um, engage your team and, and that they feel that it is built more for them, that they understand how to use it and it's going to be something that um, that will resonate with the work that they do. So it needs to fit their workflows. Scalability, you wanna make sure that this company can grow with you. We all are know that there's more and more need out there. And so you wanna make sure that you're getting with a partner that is scalable to 
your growth um, desires. Also, um, user friendliness and training. This is something that's very critical for your team to make sure that they are um, very engaged in the product. As I said earlier, we want to make sure there's it's easy to use, it's intuitive, that there's sufficient training and support. We've had circumstances in the past where we just had a very, very small offering of training, and then it becomes a very costly item because you know there's always going to be need for more training. It's just the way it works. We have a lot of um, a, a quite diverse workforce and a lot of different levels of competency with technology, so there has to be some partnership, definite partnership on the training and support and clear understanding of what's included and what's not. The data security and compliance is a critical factor in today's world with all the cybersecurity challenges. You must, must, must make sure your technology partner is very up to date on that, that they're protecting the data, that you have the appropriate documentation in place to show that they um, are doing that, that you can provide to your auditors that will come in and want to know uh, who are you partnering with and are you sure that it's not opening a door for the bad actors to enter through and regulatory compliance, making sure that we're in, in compliance with all the regulations that are out there that govern the work that we do to protect the data, protect the individuals, and make sure that that um, has all been considered and documented appropriately. We also need to know that we're gonna be able to look at what's happening in this technology in a manner that's gonna help us to know we can make decisions. Data-driven decision-making is one of our key goals in our data transformation. We wanna know with the, the number of lives that we serve here, we wanna know that we're, we're moving in, right, in the right direction based on what the data is showing us. Using manual systems, very hard to do. By using these um, technology solutions, it becomes much more attainable. So you wanna check out the analytics, the reporting capabilities, impact measurement. How are we gonna prove um, that this is having impact, that this is doing what we want it to do? So you wanna make sure these partners can help you to achieve an understanding of that. Collaboration and communication. It's got to be a partnership. It can't just be a vendor-client relationship. It won't be successful if it's that level. So you really want to make sure that there is a clear path to the executive team of that company, that you understand what that relationship is, um, and the responsive support when you have issues, challenges, <clears throat> that you know that you can pick up the phone and get some kind of support. Um, that is another element that will make or break the success of these types of initiatives. And finally, um, the cost and ROI, cost effectiveness is critical, critical, critical in the nonprofit arena. We work within tight budgets, we have limited funding. We have to make sure that our funding partners, meaning our oversight agencies at, in New York, Office of Mental Health, um, um, OASIS, OPWDD, all these, all these levels of oversight, that they are on board with technology of this nature, that they're gonna support that when you put the claims through your accounting system. Um, the return on investment, how are we gonna measure that? What is, um, what is the ways to measure that and, and really work with these partners to understand? And then future proof, proofing, to make sure that there is um, an innovation roadmap that these partners are on board with trying to um, keep innovating and keep the product fresh and addressing the needs that will be um, come that will service from the team and adaptability. Obviously, with the exponential change I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure the software, the platforms are adaptable. We experienced all of these factors with Velo Health. They've um, been uh, one of the stellar technology partners that we've come across and really have um, set, the, set the bar in these areas. Um, solving our community support team challenges, the team safety, compliance, oversight, and workforce shortages are where we wanted to go. This mobile solution, as you can see, this view um, was the thing that really uh, was getting us excited about finding solutions for these areas. So to get more into what the um, program is providing, um, the Velo Health Collaborative Platform, which is short VCP, is the um, 
the acronym that we use for that is an integrated mobile desktop solution. So we have a mobile solution as well as a desktop solution. For those back in the office, we can pull up, like myself, we can pull up the Velo Health platform and really see, it's like your operational dashboard for these teams. So the team leads use that in a number of different ways. Um, and then the mobile solution obviously is what the teams are actually using out in the field but they provide the care teams with the ability to collaborate, use technology and improve outcomes. And here's some of the ways they do that. Um, we have the ability now to have HIPAA compliant messaging between team members. It's um, a critical component when you're out in the field and you need to get answers right away to know that you can use this platform to be able to communicate and not have to worry about any of the HIPAA challenges, uh, issues, violations that we all try to avoid as much as we possibly can. This also has been providing um, up-to-date data for the clients um, in our staff's hand, in the palm of their, their hand. When they walk up to a door, like I said before, they've got a great way to just look at the solution or the application on their phone and be able to tell um, what is going on with that particular client um, in the matter of minutes. They're also, um, it's providing stability by providing us with a social determinant of health factors. We have a lot of demographic data listed. We have um, collateral information, triggers that um, our individuals may have if they have an anniversary date of a very traumatic event or something that really causes them to decompensate that's in the system so that people can easily refresh their memory and know what kind of um, discussion points they may wanna have with that individual when they visit them. And then another key element is last visit information. That's what's so helpful to the team members when they are out in the field and wanting to make sure they're addressing the right areas um, that the, the last visit may have had occur with our ACT teams, our apartment treatment teams, there's there's um, opportunity for a variety of team members for these visits so they can determine what happened if they weren't the person that visited them last to see if there's anything that they need to do to, um, to um, help that individual um, address challenges they were facing in that last visit. The safety feature has been something that's really resonated with our teams. Um, there's a discreet way to call team members or go a step more and call 911 that won't further agitate the client. In many cases, when you're in these scenarios, when you feel the need to call for support, um, if the client or the, the individual we're serving sees that you're doing something of that nature, it can cause them to decompensate further or become more aggressive with you. This, um, this solution is providing uh, what's called an SOS button where you can discreetly um, call on these types of support to make sure that um, you're, you're able to feel safe and secure when you start to have that uncomfortable feeling of um, some, some type of unsafe condition. The mapping technology is providing our teams with travel efficiency. I've heard from the team members that they, like I said earlier, they know whether to turn left or right in order to have the best outcome and the most effective travel plans for the array of visits that they're doing that day. It, it literally gives you a map of, of what is what is planned for that day and shows you, um, you know, the most effective travel plans for that. It also provides our team back in the office ability to monitor for safety and mentoring um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in an example of a great um, outcome that we achieved because of that opportunity. There's also flexibility that I mentioned earlier with a team turnover or vacancies that people can quickly update themselves on somebody's case file if they have to step in and provide services for um, some, some additional caseload that they were added because we've had um, a vacancy or someone is out sick or you know whatever the circumstance, but they have to step in and take on a new case, either temporarily or for a time, that will help them to get feel most prepared when they go to the door. 
Um, we also um, have the ability now to make sure that we're seeing everybody in our census at an appropriate level. It's easy for our team leads to be able to identify um, individuals who have not been seen um, in a month's time or in a week's time, depending on which uh, program we're looking at, and they can rectify that situation very easily by um, taking a look at what's on the um, desktop solution and getting the, the appointments lined up to make sure that we're caring for the individuals in an effective manner and in a timely manner. We also can um, have the billable versus non-billable information. So the visits, there's definitely different um, types of visits and we wanna make sure that we are monitoring that to um, have the best fiscal uh, financial outcome for these programs. We have to have our financial goals met in order to keep these programs fiscally viable. And so that's real critical information. And for those programs that require Medicaid coverage, um, we have incorporated um, through this partnership, the Medicaid recertification reminders. They'll start popping up for the team member. Whoever's visiting that individual will get a reminder of it's, it's almost time for recertification. Ask your um, individual if they've received the paperwork because many times you know we've all learned in the past it they may not understand they may throw it away they may not want it but by having those reminders we can help prevent a lapse in coverage which can be very difficult because services will stop in certain scenarios obviously not for us but that also affects our financial outcomes if we don't have that medicaid coverage in place um, and finally the goals and objectives for the service plan are available for the team to select when they're in the field. So this is how we're maintaining that golden thread. It makes it very easy for them to click on the items that were discussed. They don't have to type out a bunch of stuff or write out a bunch of hand write out, you know, what they did on the visit. It's a matter of just picking the goals and objectives that are coming from that particular individual's um, case file and making sure that they are um, addressing the proper ones in order to have um, the proper achievement of those goals and then to document it appropriately when they are at the point in time ready to put it into the electronic health record. Um, visit time and geolocation are um, provided in this platform, which is something that we never had before. This is giving us access to new data. We're, we're learning more about the number of visits that are spent with each individual. Um, with each visit, this is going to be backup support. It's not primary support for our billing, but it is backup support. If any of you have been involved in OMIG audits, you know that sometimes you have to rely on backup support in order to provide um, assurance that we are doing the work that we say we're doing. Um, in certain cases, there are programs in um, across the country that do require electronic visit verification. We are not doing that in our programs here. It's not required by the state, but this provides opportunity to easily transition into that in the future if that does become a requirement. And it's very good for mentoring. Um, this is a great way for team leads to be able to keep track of the time spent with individuals and understand if the case managers, especially newer ones that are still trying to learn the workflows and the processes that work best for their clients, if they're utilizing their time effectively. The oversight and metrics are readily available at any time um, for the management team to use in decision making. Like I said, we have a robust um, amount of data available for us to take a look at and I'll show you some of that a little later in the presentation. Um, so as far as success stories, the visit efficiency, what I was mentioning before, we had a mentoring opportunity where we had a new staff that was not able to get her work completed. She said she was feeling behind all the time. She didn't have time to get her notes into the electronic health record. And when our manager um, sat down, our team lead sat down with her and started looking at the amount of time she was spending at each, um, at each visit, she was spending um, hours instead of limiting it to um, accomplishing the goals she needed and then moving on. So through some mentoring of that, they were able to really adjust her workload to where she could effectively complete all of her duties in the allotted time 
not have to work overtime or stay after hours to try to complete the work that should be completed in her normal work day. The real-time oversight, um, there was a circumstance where I had conversation with one of our um, Office of Mental Health field office um, individuals, and they were asking about the types of visits that we were doing with a particular individual. They were concerned there was not enough in-person activity or interaction. Um, our team was concerned because this individual didn't like to meet in person. So I was able to pull up the desktop solution and be able to see just very quickly and easily what kind of visits were achieved because in this platform, we're able to see, was it in person? Was it by telephone? Was it by Zoom? So there's a lot of different um, bits of information that can help with these types of conversation and confirmation of the kind of care that's being taken care of. Many times, if we do have an unfortunate circumstance of an incident or a decompensation, these are great ways to go back and try to analyze, are we giving the right mix of services for these individuals? And now we have a rich array of data in which to determine that. Team safety, the panic button, we've had, um, prior to having this technology, we had that unfortunate circumstance I referred to before, where we actually had some teams assaulted by an individual. Some two team members went out um, and they had no way to contact their support teams and 911 effectively. Um, and, and it led to this um, assault. Um, but what we found is with this technology, we have not had that occur again um, because we have the ability to um, to avoid the circumstances before they start to, to advance to that level. Um, there has been some tests of this that were a little humorous in the fact that somebody um, had pressed the button in error and the whole team was notified and they got a flood of calls from the team. So we've had many test runs that were able to prove that it is an effective safety measure and it really helps with retention and with the new hires having confidence that they, they are being um, properly supported in safety measures. And then for retention and engagement, um, what we've noticed is our newer staff that have been coming on, they're very excited to know that we have um, this technology available. They feel like it's, we all work with cell phones now, like it's kind of attached to our body. So it's very natural, very intuitive for them. And they um, are just excited that there is technology for them to use in this manner because it's just um, an extension of what they typically do in their day-to-day -day lives. Some of the ways that we've measured the effectiveness of this um, product is by um, asking our team their level of satisfaction. And we've done that in partnership with Fellow Health and really keeping an eye on what, what it means to the team. We wanna make sure the technology solutions that we're putting in place is, is improving um, outcomes, improving the team satisfaction. And so here's some of the information that we found out about that. Um, the, the VCP is improving client outcomes. So this was a question that was posed to our users. Um, just As you can see, we've had a number of quarters to assess data. We do have ups and downs in this data, but the overall trend that um, the VCP is improving client outcome is continuing to trend upwards. It's interesting because we do see the fluctuations related to new, um, new improvements or changes that are made to the platform as, it, as it's utilized. There's constant um, tweaking of the work that's being done and the, the different solutions that are provided by this platform as we um, determine better uses, better ways of doing things and um, uh, needs that the team has expressed that they would be looking for in improving the outcomes for the client. So there may be, when a new initiative is rolled out, there may be some, some challenge with that to decrease some, some levels of in, uh, believing there's improvement, but then they bounce back once they get used to the changes in that platform. So this is a really encouraging um, statistic for us to know that we're seeing improved outcomes because that's always the goal. As far as improving workday efficiency, you can see here again, we have 
definite um, uh, indicator that yes, the the staff are seeing that these uh, efficient the efficiency factor in our in their workday is is trending up, and it continues to do that. Uh, the more and more this this app is being used by the teams, we will always want to see that. Again, we want to help these teams that are really um, stressed and 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 burdened by the work that they do because these are complex individuals and it can be very draining emotionally and for their mental health to know that we're providing them with a tool that's giving them opportunity to have more efficiency in their workday is another goal that we always want to keep at the forefront of our minds and determine how we can best do that. As far as um, the most valuable time-saving areas of the VCP, um, we are seeing that it's um, the, the winner of that. There's a number of areas. You can see here documentation of Medicaid compliant or medication compliance, the network map view of clients, client profi profile health details, and documentation of visit notes are all areas that they feel there is time savings. And they've kind of fluctuated which one is, is winning in each quarter, but the one that definitely has been trending um, positively, continually has been um, the documentation of visit notes. As I said before, this has solved a major problem for people in making sure that they're well organized and remembering all the elements that they've experienced on these visits and making sure that they have um, opportunity to document everything fully and completely so that we have um, taken credit for all of the work that we have accomplished on these visits. As far as the VCP meeting users' needs, um, an overall view, uh, again, we have clear indication that this platform, that this application is really hitting the mark. When I've had meetings with our teams um, and shown this product to some other community support teams that we're considering um, incorporating into using this platform, the word I keep hearing is it's a game changer. If we ever um, took this uh, technology away, I think um, we would have a major revolution. We would have a problem because these teams have grown to um, to really, in, uh, they're just so engaged with this platform now and it's become second nature to them. They, they really see the benefit in it. They, as the statistic says, on average, 75% of the users are satisfied or very satisfied with this platform, which is an amazing statistic in relation to technology. It's always um, a battle to try to make sure you have um, that type of engagement and make sure that the users are, are very satisfied um, with the product that they're being offered. It leads to great outcomes when you have that. So we're very, very pleased with this partnership and with the outcomes that we've been seeing in these lab levels of satisfaction. So the last area that we want to talk about is what we've learned um, and how the data is being used. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you, this, these are a little bit busy, but these slides are a way that um, we just recently started to analyze this is using, I titled this slide, Using Data to Improve Care. These are examples of the visits, the number of visits and completed visits that happened in the month of April and the month of May for our ACT teams. We have six different ACT teams. You can see the labeling there for those teams. And um, with the ACT teams, in order to achieve what we call a full billing is there's a minimum, you have to have six visits. So that's kind of the prescribed number of visits that the program was designed to accomplish to make sure that these individuals are receiving the appropriate level of care. So what we're finding is by using this type of graph and statistics that comes right out of the system at any point in time you want to run it, um, and we could run for the month of June um, today, or you know, as we progress each month that comes after, to see how we're doing. But on here, it's very critical to see that we have very low numbers in those numbers that fall below six, because we want to make sure our individuals are receiving visits um, of the prescribed amount and being able to be seen that um, that desired level of six visits at a minimum. 
But on the other hand, we also want to make sure that we understand if there are visits happening that were that are exceeding six, what is happening? Is there something there that we need to be looking at in terms of training, understanding? Is there a dynamic going on that we need to be aware of, that we need to add some additional supports for the individuals we're serving that's requiring um, more of the team's time to be engaged with these individuals? Um, on here, you can see our one team that's called Bronx. Um, there's there's a, a quite a large um, number of cases that are that are resulting in 10 or more visits. So that's something that's intriguing us, and we're going to dive in and learn more about it. But I wanted to share this kind of information being available for us to really do some some interesting analysis of how our teams are performing, how our individuals are receiving care, um, are we seeing the you know, appropriate levels there? Or are we seeing trends that are changing over time that we need to be um, addressing? Um, another thing is the fiscal oversight. As I said earlier, being an accountant by trade, I'm always looking at the numbers and always trying to make sure that we're maximizing our fiscal efficiency. And on here, you can see by using this platform, we've seen um, ability to see an increase in our Clients with full visits um, over time, you can see a nice trend upward there. That's always the goal to make sure that we have that as I indicated on the prior slide. So we see a great trend here of improvement in that particular um, statistic. And then another one that's very, very critical to us is the percentage of census not seen. We don't ever wanna have a circumstance where we have somebody on our census that has not been seen. There are reasons why that may happen due to hospitalization, um, incarceration, those types of things, but we always wanna see that number to be very small or shrinking. And so this is uh, another great statistic that we've seen using this platform. We've seen improvement in that. This The, the um, statement of what's measured is what's changed what we're experiencing with this platform now that we have this data and we're able to utilize it in an effective manner we can see that we have um, great outcomes so that's we've come to the end i know we don't have much time for questions but i'll call stacy back in and we'll see where we need to go from here thank you so much for joining us today Thank you so much, Sherry. That was an amazing presentation and, and such great data. And really, those lessons learned are going to be able to be applied across the board by those that are they're watching now as well as on demand. Um, I would like to thank everybody who uh, attended today and remind you that the slides and recording from Sherry's presentation today will be available on the Open Minds website starting tomorrow. I also want to let you know about an upcoming roundtable on Thursday, July 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, an opportunity for exponential growth, the RSG case study. If you would like to register for that uh, roundtable as well as any future roundtables, please visit the openminds.com website and visit roundtable events under our event tab. Sherry, again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we don't have any audience questions, but if any comes through, we will be sure to send them not only to you to answer, but out to the group that attended today. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.